excellence. Excellence is not a word I heard or used when I was growing up. I didn't hear it at school. I didn't hear it at home. And was a teenager before I understood the meaning of the word. I was a young adult before I could fully embrace the concept of the word. You see, I never thought I was excellent. I never thought I was excellent because I was born a statistic. I was one of every three African-American boys coffled to the school to prison pipeline because I could not read. I didn't learn to read until the age of 10. And prior to that, I had been shuttled through earlier grades in special education classes because I was considered slow. Not illiterate, but slow. A presumptive construct I was to accept. Filled with teachers who told my parents I would never graduate from high school. And it took one teacher in fifth grade to shine a little light my direction, to teach me to read and turn my fate towards one of excellence. And I did make it to high school. And although I struggled to read and although I struggled to write, I continued to look for the helpers teachers along the way who cared enough to see me turn my life towards one of success. My senior year of high school was punctuated with excellentes from my Spanish teacher whenever I gave the correct response. However, I savored those moments because infrequently they came. I usually heard a no, lo siento, coupled with a intenta otra vez. Yet somehow, Senor Ortega found the patience to work with me outside of her regular class hours. She was an amazing teacher because she believed I could become excellent. One day, the everlasting gift of literacy led me to a book that I hold close to my heart called Up From Slavery. It's a narrative written by the distinguished academic and great orator of that era, Booker T. Washington. The narrator told the story of a young Negro boy who would travel from town to town, reading the newspaper to an illiterate crowd of formerly enslaved people. When I got to that particular part of the story, I could not hold back the tears of that young boy's willingness to risk his life to read the newspaper to his people. He was excellent because he could read. And because he could read, he was an asset to his people. Because in those days, had he been caught reading, he could have been lynched. Consider this. African Americans were the only people in this country to forbiddenly, to explicitly forbidden to become literate. My grandfather never learned to read. Joseph Frank left school with a third grade education to work for his family in rural Louisiana. As a young adult, he and his wife left Jim Crow, Oklahoma, left Jim Crow Louisiana for Jim Crow, Oklahoma for more opportunities. Their greatest ambition for their children and for their grandchildren was for them to finish high school, learn a trade, and get a good job. 
but sometimes the audacity to believe can shatter decades and even centuries of harmful socialized conditioning. For that next generation, hope remained. And I did graduate from high school. And I moved to Chicago, Illinois, and enrolled in college. In Chicago, on the south side, I found a spiritual community. The caliber of excellence in this community heavily influenced my academic drive. One day, the senior minister, Dr. Jeremiah Wright, delivered a sermon on the excellence of Black Wall Street. Before then, I'd never heard about the Black Wall Street. And coincidentally, it was Booker T. Washington who named the Greenwood District the Black Wall Street. He told a story using references from the biblical book of Nehemiah, the builder of the wall of Jerusalem, and paralleled the story to a people in America just two generations out of slavery who built a community of American perfection and economic power in the shadows of ignorance. This community was one of the most prosperous in the world. Then he told the tragedy of the destruction of the Black Wall Street. 600 businesses, thousands of homes, and the massacre of human lives, all destroyed for the fear of black excellence. Before that moment, I never knew about the historical greatness of this community. And it was at that moment that I heard the calling for me to return home to Tulsa, Oklahoma and reclaim the excellence. Before that moment, I never realized the racial dynamics of the massacre, nor the full economic impact of the destruction of the Black Wall Street. But when I came home, I did graduate from college. And today, I'm a teacher. And today, I sow seeds of excellence because I teach black boys and black girls to read and write. And today, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm the founder of a digital news media company that provides information for the people. Today, I stand in the footsteps of that young Negro boy who risked his life traveling from town to town to deliver the news. Today, I'm Nehemiah, and I am excellence. Thank you.